I ask you this, sixth graders, what is it that you are passionate about? What is it that you strive for? All right. Um, so as we're going over this, think about those things that you're most passionate about and, and what you strive for. Because um, with the rise of Christianity, uh, a lot of it is uh, about the passion of uh, a person and, and a group uh, and what they want to make sure that they can uh, do or be able to do uh, with and where they live. Okay, so here we go. All right, um, the rise of Christianity. So again, this is Vodcast 7.4, um, and um, yeah, so here we go. All right, uh, so the Romans conquered Judea in 63 BC, and resentment against Rome built. And the main reason why uh, this resentment builds is because um, at first the Romans uh, respect that the Jews have this idea of monotheism. They, they respect it, they let them do it, because remember that was the Roman way. You come into an area, as long as you pay our taxes and supply us with raw materials, we'll pretty much let you keep your same lifestyle. However, Rome's idea starts to change about that. Uh, especially since um, the Jews believed that this Messiah or Savior was going to come and um, kind of free them or bring justice uh, to them in their land. So as this idea grows and grows within the Jewish community, um, the, uh, this opposition against the Romans grows further and further until finally Rome starts striking back, starts punishing more people for speaking out um, and things of that nature, okay? So then you have this uh, supposedly miraculous child that was born, all right? Um, and, you know, his name is Jesus, okay? Not supposedly he, he was born, but, how, you know, some people say he is the son of God. Other people will say something different. So, you know, however you believe, however you feel, those are your views, okay? Um, so Jesus is born in Bethlehem. And he grows up, he becomes a carpenter, and he starts his teachings uh, at the age of 30. All right? And this is a, a big shock, all right? um, mainly because of what Jesus is teaching and how he's teaching it. Um, so, most of, uh, so most of what he's teaching is that there's only one true God who's loving and forgiving. You know, this is the monotheistic way, this is the, the Jewish way. Um, and so, you know, but what, much of this, again, is, is what the Jewish tradition is that he learned as a child growing up. Because remember, Jesus is Jewish, okay? And so he's pretty much reiterating what the Jewish way of life was. And, you know, he's just taking it and he's extending it further beyond um, maybe what was felt most comfortable for other people. He wanted to make sure that he got the word out there about what was going on. So he traveled around to various different communities, and you know he taught that you know God is is loving and forgiving. Okay. However, a lot of the Romans um, or more conservative people also as well at the time feared that Jesus was trying to rise up and rebel against the king, okay, uh, or against the Roman emperor. And this kind of leads, um, a, again, a great I guess, battle between the, not necessarily a battle, but uh, it leads to a, a great rift between the Jewish community and the Roman Republic. Because um, the Romans didn't like Ju Jesus because of what the ideas he was trying to spread that, you know, this one God is all-powerful and all-knowing. Whereas in the Roman culture, it should be, no, you know, you must respect your emperor. The emperor is all-knowing. The gods are all-knowing. You know, there's, there's a hierarchy uh, of things that you're supposed to follow. And Jesus is like, no, there's not. There's, there's this one God, and he does everything. And so it really went against the, the polytheistic views of the Roman church and Roman culture. Okay. Um, so, you know, eventually Jesus is crucified. Um, and these gospels or books um, of, from various people who follow Jesus get published. Um, and this is, you know, like 40 or 70 years after uh, his death that these stories of what Jesus had done start coming out. And they're 
put in the Gospels and, and put into the, the New Testament of the Bible. And the Old Testament is very much similar to the teachings uh, that you will see in Hebrew um, or in you know the, in the Jewish culture, the Jewish religion. Um, so yeah, so that, you know, Jesus kind of starts spreading the word, spreading the religion, and then um, it's left up to the, the different disciples that go along and pass along his teachings, his followers. Okay? And, and understand one thing that's great about um, what Jesus was doing is, I think, and I think one of the reasons, and again, this is what I think, one of the reasons that, um, you know, it caused such an uproar is that, you know, Jesus is going around and talking to the poor, talking to the orphans, talking to um, the widows, the kind of the lesser rung of societies. He wasn't necessarily catering to um, like the higher hierarchy of um, the rabbis and, and so on and so forth. You know, the higher ups in the Jewish religion or in the Roman uh, fate or in the Ro Roman uh, Empire as well, because he knew this is where. He needed to be. This, these are the people that needed this hope the most, and that's what Christianity brought. It brought more of a hope uh, to um, to the to this, these classes, the lower level classes of people. All right. Um, so one of his disciples, uh, Paul. All right. His name was actually Saul, but changed his name to Paul. Uh, he goes around. He starts spreading this as well. He starts writing these letters to all these various different Christian people, uh, organizations. Uh, these epistles, as they're called, or letters, and he helps turn it. Actually, helps turn these teachings of Jesus into an organized faith. Um, so our good old friend Nero pops up again. All right, and he strikes out a campaign against the Christians in 64 A.D. He wants to basically annihilate them. He blames them for all of Rome's problems even though they weren't to blame for all of Rome's problems, okay? And so a fire happens, um, so Nero blames Christians, arrests a bunch of them, starts executing them, uh, including Paul, uh, and then he, and then um, it just kind of down spirals from there in terms of the, uh, in terms of the Roman, um, in terms of the Roman Empire, it's kind of towards the end of the Roman Empire. And again, you know, why, you know, Nero blames the Christians for Rome's problems. It wasn't the Christians' problems that Rome was in financial, economic disarray. There's other things that go along with that. But as I said in class, you know, I said, some people do blame the Christians for the fall of Rome. And it's not to say that, you know, they did anything. It's because... Christianity spoke to a larger audience of the Roman Empire than what the traditional Roman polytheistic views were. All right, so it, you know, teaching that God is loving and forgiving, and that after you die, you go to a more heavenly place, and you know, you'll have a better life there. They looked up to that. That wasn't said in the Roman religion at all. Um, so that's kind of why um, more and more people, you know, because remember the vast majority of the Roman uh, of the of Roman society were poor and jobless. All right, Christianity gave them hope. Okay, Roman didn't. All right, so those are our notes. If you have any questions, bring them to class. Otherwise, we'll jump into this a, a little bit more deeper in class, and then maybe find out what the real reasons for Rome's fall was. Peace out.